so when I'm setting up for watercolors, you have to be quite prepared because watercolor is um, so unforgiving that it has to be done kind of on the spot. You can't kind of walk away from it and come back to it. So you have to kind of really be prepared for, for a watercolor uh, painting. So the first thing um, obviously is important is some watercolor paper and always have a swatch that you can um, just do some, you know, an old piece of, of paper that you can just kind of test the colors on and stuff before you actually apply it to the paper. Uh, I have a pan of watercolors, but you could have a tube or whatever you have. So I'll go through the colors in a while. Uh, a tub of, of very clean water and it doesn't look clean, but it is. So watercolors, um, you have to, kind of keep cleaning out the water it should be quite fresh the water should be clean so it's very important to have a large tub of water that you're not kind of it's not in a dense small container that's just getting dirty really quick and um, a palette is a really good thing to have because you're going to um kind of create a wash and have them in in these little pans so that, that you don't run out of the color so once you mix the color obviously if you run out it's very hard to mix the exact same color again then I have a selection of brushes. So um, the the number of brushes I would use are um, are a ten, an eight, and a six. And when you're painting with watercolor, you should always paint the biggest size brush um, for the area that you're going to paint. So you would think that if you and um, had a smaller brush you might be kind of a bit more precise but it's actually the opposite way so always use uh, the biggest brush you have for that area then i have some kitchen papers to to do some blotting i have a pencil and um, that's just a 4b pencil but it, it doesn't have to be 4b it could be a harder pencil and then i have two polychrome chromos uh, coloring pencils and these are to add a bit of detail later on to add a bit of definition so not everybody will have them, but even if you have kind of a bit of white chalk or a bit of um, a white pastel or a white gel pen, yeah, that's, they're nice for adding highlights. And then I'm just using this brown for a bit of detail in the bark. I also have a rubber there. I usually would use a putty rubber, but most people would have just one like this. So that's okay. So I generally will set up my paints are on the right, I'm right handed um, near the water and I have the blotting paper and the swatch nearby. So everything's to hand because once you start, um, you shouldn't really stop in between. Also, I have a, a little hair dryer that speeds up the process so I don't have to wait for colors to dry. So if you have a little hair dryer, I use a travel hair dryer and it just kind of, it, it's, it saves you having to wait literally to watch paint dry. Okay, so next up is to get the, the colour palette ready. So to get the colour palette ready, you should look up a reference image or take a photograph of a tree that, that's outside or maybe go onto Pinterest and, and search for a certain tree, uh, like an oak tree or a beech tree. But I'm just gonna use um, an image reference from another painting that I did of a tree. So that's just what I'm gonna reference off. And I'm just gonna use the, the, the colors in the image to mix up the colors that I want to use in my palette. So generally for this, I would recommend using um, a minimum of two colors, two types of greens, so two color greens, a light one and a dark one. So for the light one, I'm going to use this color here it's olive green or else it might be called sap green in different sets so you would always um wet your wet your paint palette for the colors that you might be using just to activate them so obviously because they're watercolor they're water activated so and that's just what i'm doing now so just kind of adding a little blob of water to um to colors that i might use so if you have like um like a bottle for you know hairspray or something like a demystify you know you can use that to to mist it up so when i just have them um activated so it's just called activating the water the colors when you add a bit of water so i'm going to use the the olive green just to create my first color 
So you're just kind of mixing between the paint and the water just to judge how much you need. So you don't want it to be too dense, so too heavy with paint, but then you don't want it to be too watery. So obviously with watercolor, the more water you add, the lighter the color is and the less um, water, the less um, the, the heavier the color is going to be. So I'm just going to use my swatch paper here just to test out what the color will look like. So you kind of want it a bit free flowing and just leave that to dry. So while that's drying, I'm going to do the same to my darker color green. So generally I wouldn't use colors straight from the palette. So I always add a little bit of another color. So I just added a little bit of the olive green color into that as well. Um, two colors can look great separately um, on a palette like this. And the main um, thing you want to see is what they look like when they are together. So I'm also dabbing the, the, my brush on the, pa the kitchen paper. So that's just to take the excess water off my paintbrush. So I'm just gonna see what these will look like when they dry together. So when watercolor dries, it will dry about um, two shades like lighter than the color when you put it on the paper. And this is very different than acrylic paints. So acrylic will dry a bit darker. So every medium of paint has its own, its own properties, its own rules on how, how you need to paint with them. So it is, um, it's kind of a skill that you learn over time of which, is, which goes with what and, and, and what rules to, to work on. Okay, so I'm gonna leave them to dry and then I'm gonna mix up a color for the bark. So I like a kind of a cool color in the bark. So I'm going to go for um, a sepia brown color. I might add a little bit of umber, but use whatever brown you have. Generally, I, I don't recommend, if you want to darken a color, I don't recommend using black. I would always recommend maybe using a kind of an, an indigo or kind of a, a deep blue but if you ha have black and that's all you have then use that so if if you have a palette that doesn't actually have a green because some cat palettes might only have the primary colors of yellow red and blue so you should mix up your own green i would add the yellow have the yellow first and then bit by bit add a little bit of blue each time and then that could be your base color for the the pale color and then in a separate palette do the same but add a bit more blue to get the deeper deeper green so this is just sepia on its own i might add a little bit more paint to that you want it to be rich but you don't want it to look kind of cakey or chalky or I'm also going to, there's, okay, so there's white in that palette, so I'm not going to use this, this, um, so I'm going to have a little bit of, I said, a bit of umber, and then to give it a little bit of warmth, so umber is kind of a cold gray, a cold brown, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber, which is a, a, a warmer color. So that's just to have another brown option for us. And then I'm going to have a black, uh, a gray color ready to go. So I usually would use um, neutral black. And this is just for shadowing at the end. So you're kind of constantly mixing and, and testing and just dipping in and out of different colors. And it's really just kind of getting to know the colors and the palettes. There's no other way to learn except to just do it, I guess. Okay, so generally I would <laughs> take out my hair dryer and I would dry these to see what they actually look like. And when I'm fully happy with that with them, I um, that's when I would start then on the painting, so.
Okay, so when you're happy with your palette, the next thing we're going to do is do a basic outline just to keep us on track of a tree. So generally, if you're a traditionalist painter, you don't believe in adding pencil lines or believe in doing a kind of a pencil guideline. So um, a traditionalist would believe that they are drawing with their paints. But obviously I enjoy a good pencil. So I would always add a little bit of a guideline kind of general of, of where I need to keep proportions right. So if I'm looking at this tree, I'm going to base it off the size of the trunk of the tree. So I, I'm kind of measuring up that the tree um, has two and a half trunks, if that makes sense. So the make sure that the foliage is big enough, you know, to carry, um, like that they're, they're kind of in proportion that it looks full, it looks rich, especially if it's an oak tree, because generally the, the leaves and all, um, this part of the tree is a lot bigger than the trunk. So that's kind of the feel that I want to get. You kind of want to get the proportions right though. So it feels like there's weight in the top of the tree. And also you want a good trunk as well, that it looks like it's holding something quite heavy. So I would advise not to do just like a straight line for the for the trunk. I would always kind of add a little bit of interest and maybe do a little bend or something like that just to kind of spice it up a little. So I'm just going to do that now. So if you're looking at the, the tree, I would generally start to look at the trunk and then I would look at um, I would kind of squint my eyes a little bit and see the general shape of the outline of the tree. Or I would look for the areas of the light colours. So look for the areas of the light colours and kind of just say, okay, basic shape of what that will look like. And that's the top of the tree, that's the side of the tree. Um, and leave it at that, but I'll show you. So, so for this tree, I'm just going to see, well, if that's... Now, this isn't set in stone, so, like, if, if this is what you start off with and it evolves throughout the painting, that's fine. Like, it's not... Okay, so I think I did that tree, I did it a little bit too high up on the page. You just you don't want it to look like it's after being crammed up, um, in the top part of the page. You kind of you want it to to sit well, a bit of placement of of the on the paper. So that's kind of why I just. So it's really very basic. I'm not sure if you can see that right, but it literally is just the base of the trunk and general outline of what the leaves area will be. Because watercolor, it's one, um, it's, it's, you, you can't control everything watercolour does. So sometimes you have to go at what happens. So you, you can't plan things too much. So you don't, you know, you can't say, well, this is where the leaves are going to end um, to, you know, to a certain degree you can, but you have to have a bit of flexibility in what it's going to look like. So I don't usually use them. I usually use a putty rubber, so. So I'm just lifting with a putty rubber, lifting off the heavy lines. So that's really it, basic shape. I'm just double checking that the trunk is two and a bit. Yep, and I'm gonna jump right in. So the first color I'm going to paint with is the lighter color. So when you're using watercolors, always work from light color to dark color. And this is exactly what I'm doing now. So when you're painting, make sure that you leave some areas of white in the middle of the of the tree just to show that there's light coming through to make it feel like there's real leaves there you don't want to just have a heavy block of you know of leaves it has to have a little bit of whiteness 
coming true. So generally just kind of let the paint um, tell you where to go. Once you, once you lay the paint down in one area, I'd kind of just leave it. I wouldn't go back too much. Okay, so when you have the basic shape, just kind of any general shape, I would go in with the tip of my brush, I collect up some watercolour, and then just around the edges, I would do kind of little, like little semicircles or little dots. Um, and later on, these will look really nice. So once you kind of have this area of light colour down, you can't go back and get this colour again. So you have to work when the paint is wet so you don't go back in on, on dry areas to try and um, repaint over them or anything so you have to kind of work really fast and like if you make a mistake like I didn't like the way that looked so I'm just going to paint over it um, and I just kind of like to add these little specks it just makes it look like the tree is more realistic Okay, if you're brave enough and you have little pools of um, paint so they're not fully dry, you can dip your brush into your dark colour paint and just let them kind of, or the, the dark colour green, sorry, and just let them pool a little bit. Now, like it looks, it looks funny now, but... Okay, now I would leave that as it is. I'm gonna take out the hair dryer and dry this. Okay, so I've I've dried it with my hair dryer and it um doesn't look great, you know. There's um these dried areas here, so these are called cauliflowers when they leave little marks like that. And generally it, for watercolors, kind of cauliflowers are a bit ugly, but when you're doing um trees or foliage. It actually really adds to it so I'm, I don't I don't mind that so when I was drawing this part the the paint kind of bled down so I'm gonna try and I'll fix that up and show you how I'd fix that up but for the first layer like it's fine so watercolors is all about layering also so here is where I added the the blends as well okay so I'm gonna go back in again I'm gonna mix up using the same pale green and it's just to add another layer of depth using the same colour so make sure this is fully dried first. Uh, you don't want to do the exact same kind of outlines you want to make it look like these are layers of leaves that are in you know different um, perspectives different depth so you don't want to do the same strokes over and over again so I'm going to kind of I'll just show you how to do that. So you just kind of want to add areas of interest and um, it's okay then if you paint over some of the white the white um, gaps we left so I'm not going to do as uh, much with this second round of the same color I'm just kind of going to play around and see what it looks like So 
So just kind of, I always use just kind of like sweeping movements like the letter C. And then if you want to add a bit more of your dark green color to do a bit of a blend in that as well, you can do that. Um, and I'm just literally holding my brush near the end, near the end of the, of the, um, I don't know, stick and just kind of lightly dipping the color in. You don't want to have the same thing going on all over the tree because then it just looks quite boring. So I'm gonna dry this now. Okay, so when the second layer is dry, I'm now going to do the, the tree trunk. Sorry, I'm just moving my chair. So I'm gonna use maybe a thinner brush. So for me, I'm gonna use the number six and I'm going to use, um, what was it, uh, the sepia colour. Well, I'm actually going to mix, use a bit of the sepia colour and a bit of, um, I think it was the burnt umber, yeah. So for this, um, you kind of have to be a bit more controlled because obviously you want to stay within the parameter of the tree trunk. I like to leave little gaps as well. Um, and that just breaks up the heaviness of the, the tree or any, any painting. And when it is still wet, I'm gonna add, oh, that's a bit dry, so I'm just reactivating the Mars, or burnt umber. And I'm just gonna add kind of areas of burnt umber as well. And they're like, we don't want to, um, to blot in too much. If you do blot, if you do blot in too much, if you're trying to mix the colors, um, Dry off your brush as, as much as you can on the tissue paper and then with no paint or no water on your brush you can actually go in and suck up some of the, the wet paint there. So the, the bristles of the brush will naturally draw up um, water so it will actually suck up some of the paint if you've kind of left, if you put too much on there's a bit of a blob. So I'm actually, I'm also going to add some of the, the, the ground at the floor I guess or the up at the bottom, the base of the tree. So there's no real, like it's just kind of a straight line and you want to add um, a bit of height with kind of, areas of grass and stuff. So throughout this tree here, there's also branches that are within the tree, but I will we'll leave them to later on to do so. I would just do the bark or the, the main tree trunk first and then later on go, go down and do more areas of the bark. So I could leave that to dry and when I'm leaving that to dry, I'm gonna work on the dark areas in the tree. So the, the darker color green and with the darker color green, we have to be a bit more calculated of where we're gonna where we're gonna place the color because once it's on, we obviously can't take it away and we don't want it to look too heavy. So this is kind of a crucial stage. The first layer, it didn't matter if we made a mistake because it was just free flowing. But for this layer, we kind of have to really focus on where we want the areas. So for this, I'm you should look at your tree that, that you're referencing and kind of see the, even if you have to squint your eyes and see the kind of mid-tone areas. So I would kind of be looking at this, um, I don't know if you can see this color rather than a deep color. So this kind of areas, and they're the areas that I'm going to paint next. 
I'm going to be conscious to leave this area white and that's why here has a little bit of um it's it's a lot clearer it's a lot cleaner and um I've left some areas here as well so you can see that's why it's kind of mirroring um each other so I'm just going to get ready to go in with the deeper green so just make sure that that's fully wet or fully dry we don't want it to be wet So the same rules apply really, just kind of um, for, kind of re look at the reference images and just play around with the paint. Don't you don't follow the same lines you've done before. It's okay to even to do like a little loop that's kind of coming out over the edge, like that's fine, and it will just add more depth. Uh, a lot of the time with painting, it's knowing what areas to leave uh, alone and not paint is the hardest part. So less is definitely more. I just do kind of looping motions and then sometimes I add like little dots that make it look like and um, little sprigs, I guess. I'm focusing now on this area down here that has the heavy part of the, the deep part. Uh, Kiwi's here in the studio with me, so there are the little footsteps walking around. <laughs> so the same rules apply if you wanted to add um, a deeper colour to make this green deeper. You could do it at this stage when the paint is wet. But I would kind of wait until the first layer of this colour is dry and then see what it looks like. If an area has too much paint in it, like I was saying earlier on, to suck it up with your brush, so you could kind of suck it up there like that and then reapply it somewhere else. So you're just kind of lifting the, the, the excess paint. So here's the, the kind of the mistake or the bleed that I had earlier on and like that will be fine, it'll be covered up. You don't want too many bitty areas of colour and um, and that's just how uh, in case the eye will look at it funny that there there's so many broken patches if that makes any sense you do want areas where the the leaves and the foliage is linked to each other so then it carries the eye from one area of the painting to the next so that i your eye will dance around the painting so you have to be aware of what the viewer is going to look at when the painting is finished as well so it's just something to be conscious of not to have little itty bitty parts all over the place so i'm going to add a little bit of the kind of the gray color or the 
the deep grey colour like a tiny bit. Okay, now I'm going to let this, um, I'm going to dry this now. Okay, so that's dried. And the next area I'm going to paint is the tree trunk and I'm going to add some shadowing. So when you're adding, adding shadows, we want to just have them uh, one direction as if the sun is coming in from one direction and uh, one area is highlighted and one area is shadow. So I'm going to kind of follow the same um, light and shade from this reference image. So the sun was obviously kind of coming in from this side and the shadowing is all on the left hand side of the tree. And um, this obviously, like it, it just, it's not gospel because if there's weight on top of the tree, there's obviously going to be shadows on the bark and stuff. So I wouldn't worry about it too much like, but I just wouldn't outline the two sides of the tree with darker color because then it will just flatten the 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 tree trunk and it wouldn't it won't look like a round cylinder shape it will just look like a plank of wood it would just look flat so I'm going to go in now with the same color again actually it's going to be the sepia again so the the, the first um brown color we used and you're just adding the same kind of I don't want to say the same area again you're you're kind of you are going over the same area but you're using different strokes and you're kind of highlighting different areas especially if you think of the bark of a tree it's not going to be a flat surface it's going to have lumps and bumps and pockets that come out and dip in so um you're just kind of going back over the tree and the little area of greenery around it and like this just takes time, it's just kind of bits, it's just layering bit by bit by bit. And if you're feeling brave, you can add a little bit of the black colour, but we're going to add that later on, so there's no need to go too, too wild too quickly. Okay, so when that's done, so you're just kind of adding hope you can see that just a little area of shading on the on the tree trunk and next we're going to go back in and work more on the deeper shade of green so I'm going to mix up more of the deep the dark green because I've ran out from the last time so same process and um, a bit of water a bit of paint and have my you okay Kiwi I'm going to go slightly deeper this time, so I'm actually going to pick up a bit of um, ultramarine blue. And I'm just going to dip that in and it'll just add a bit more depth that it's not the same colour. And like it's, it's literally, it's not going to change the colour of the green too much to the naked eye. But when it is layered with the green that's been there before it, it will just add a bit of difference. So obviously in nature there's no straight lines so I wouldn't do straight lines on this tree at all. And, and try and keep areas of white still in the tree. If you've managed to make mix a, a deeper shade of green than the last time, I would be conscious of painting the under areas a deeper green. So these are kind of like, I don't know, like little fluffs, little pockets. And see the way the shading is all on this side, there's none over here. So that's the same rule of light and shade that I'm trying to apply. And it's just to make it look like each area is its own, it, it's its own kind of weight, it's its own kind of pocketed area. So that if I did all of this area with the deeper, the deeper green all the way around it, it will just flatten it. So you kind of still want to make it look like it's actual 3D shape and that the sun is hitting different areas. So that's why I'm only focusing on the kind of bottom area 
of the um, the undersides of the tree, the undersides of the branches, the undersides of the, the pockets of leaves and stuff. So it, you don't want to kind of kill it off altogether. And um, sometimes talking about what you're painting is actually quite difficult because a lot of it can be just based on instinct of what you're what you're doing um, and it's hard to explain why you do what you do sometimes. You want to keep it really organic. And don't be afraid to go outside the initial um, light paint, light green line. And um, so I'm just going to add like little areas of maybe little branches that are sticking out, little um, leaves, because you don't want it to be like that it's closing in on top of each other, that the colours are um, only the light colour is out here and the dark colour is in there. You, you do want to add a bit of depth. Now just be conscious of mixing too much because you can actually make the paint, the painting look really murky. And then I'm just going to add little areas of the dark kind of greyish colour with the, with the, with the dark green. Not too many areas of these because these can look quite flat if you're using grey. Now it looks quite, um, it looks a bit too dark there but when it dries it's going to be a shade brighter so I'm just going to dry that one now. Okay so the second layer of the darker green has dried and next I'm going to, I'm just getting rid of some marks here. Oops, a daisy. Next, I'm going to go in and paint the shadows here on the, the dark part of the tree. So there's areas in this tree that I'm not really happy with. Um, I'll just explain why. So this area up here, it just looks really muggy. It looks really um, like I added too much paint to that area. So it's kind of kilted. So there's always going to be an area of a painting you're not happy with, but it's kind of good to know why you're not happy with it and what went wrong. So that's the kind of reason I don't like this area. It's a bit muddy looking. The colours aren't great. Um, I'm happy with that I have these areas of light. You can look at this tree. And um, this is obviously darker. So I'm happy I have these areas of lightness in the centre and it breaks it up a good bit. So I'm going to also do... Um, if you can see these little tree branches, I guess, that kind of run up through the center of the tree. So that's what I'm going to do in this next. And that's why it's nice to leave a little gap. Okay, so I'm going to go back with the, to the original color, the original brown, which is sepia brown. And it's really guesswork of what the tree might look like here because you are, I'm just going with what the paint has, has left me really. So there's no real plan on where the branches, branch, branches should be. So you're just kind of, this is what we call artistic license. I do like to have a branch kind of coming out at the end, but I don't know if I have any. Like you don't want to add a branch just for the sake of it either. Like I usually would add one here, but I think there's just too much foliage going on, foliage, so. I would just generally for this add like a shape of a fork for the likes of this kind of branch. I 
and I'll leave it at that. And um, we can always go back in and add more, but once it's down, it's it's hard to take it away. So next, I'm going to add the um, black area or the deep kind of grey area, the shading that's under the tree. So you're kind of going to do it that this area is in, to in total shade because the branches are on top and it will kind of give a nice depth. Like I said earlier, don't put too much in because you'll actually kill, kill it like it'll look flat. I'm going to add a little bit of green to the areas down here just to um, make it look like it's grass. Just a, a, a touch of it, it doesn't have to be too much. I'm happy with the, fo the, the foliage, I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to go back in because I'll only um, do more damage than, than good. So I'm gonna just let the bark of the tree dry now. Okay, so I've zoomed in a little bit to show um, a bit more of the areas of details that we're gonna put in. So we're kind of finished adding paint to it now. Hopefully the lighting is okay here. So um, having said that, I might add a little bit of paint here to the tree trunk just to deepen that, that shadow again. So I'll start off with that. So really you're just reacting to what the paint is doing. I'm gonna make that paint, um, I'm, it's just, it was a little bit too pale. So I've added a bit more paint to it. And same rule applies, like you can do the same area, but don't do the exact same pathways, I guess. And these new branches we put in, I'm gonna add just areas of shading onto them too. You don't want to add too many layers because it will actually play with the viewer's eye, the viewer's eye um, and they won't know what lines to follow. So if there's too many layers it's it's um you know it, it's messy looking so you kind of have to know when to when to leave it so i'm just going to um well, i let them dry i should be okay so next i'm going to add if you look at this reference image and um, there's areas where i've added some pencil line around the leaves and also, I'll just switch it this way so you can see the area here of the bark where there is some pencil line for a bit of definition. Some people don't go in and do pencil line, but obviously I have a natural love of pencils, so I do. So I'm gonna just focus on the, the leaves until the bark dries and hopefully I won't smudge it. And there's no kind of formula for this, it's just, looking at what's in front of you and reacting to it. I'm trying to block in areas of, of the leaves as well so that they're in clusters. And it's just kind of naturally looking at what has, has formed in front of you and going with that. I use a mechanical pencil and um, I think it is a 2B or a 3B but like you can you can use a regular pencil too. It's the same rule applies I wouldn't add too much because less is more. It's just some areas might do with a little bit of definition 
um, a little bit of, you know, a tree, a leaf thing like this, like this type of motif. And it will just add a bit of texture also. Okay, I'm just going to dry this now because it's taking a bit of time. And now I'm going to add some definition onto the, the tree bark. So when you're doing a pencil line for the tree bark, make sure it is a strong pencil line. It is a definitive line. There's no scratching and stuff because when you think of the properties of a tree and the trunk of a tree, it has to be strong. So you don't want it broken. back in with areas of the first color green that we have um, and I'm just going to add little bits of kind of leaf um, clusters and I'm just going to try and do that in the areas that are brighter. Not many. I think it's always nice to add some at the base of the the tree here that there's kind of you know there's leaves that are kind of hanging down as well I think that's lovely but too much can be overkill too so now for if anyone who has um, a white pencil or how to use it so I would just use it one side the same as if we're using the shade, it's going to be on this side and the light will be this side. So we're just kind of looking at the heavier looking branches and just adding some motifs there. It can look nice on the bark of the tree. believe it or not even highlighting too much can also um, look a bit crap as well if it's if, if you're doing too much it's the same as adding too much dark if you're adding too much light it kills the contrast now the good thing about um, the polychromos if you add too much areas you can actually erase them not like the paint, not like the paint, so. And lastly, I'm actually gonna add a little bit of detail on the, the grass area. So I'm just gonna go in with our first kind of green and I know, I know it's kind of murky there already. So it's just adding a little touch of, of um, green to that. And now it's just time to put the pencil down and walk away. <laughs> okay, so that's our, our tree is finished now. Sometimes less is more and you have to just walk away. And generally I walk away and I come back in an hour and see um, if <laughs> it's usually better than you than you thought when you walked away from it. So it's just, the, this is a comparison. So this is the tree I was referencing the image and this is the one that I just painted. And obviously they'll never be the same twice because the paint, the way you apply it, the water levels, everything is different. So the tree will always be different or the, the image will always be different. You'll never get the same one twice. So don't beat yourself up if you if you don't. 
and um, I'm quite happy with it. There's nice contrast in it. I'll just zoom in a little. You can see the areas of white around here. Um, the gaps I left actually look really nice with the with the last bit of detail I added just kind of brings a pop. And if you can see this here, the area of dark, that really shows that the tree is holding up weight and this trunk is underneath. So I think that line, this area, this line here is really important.